you sure this is the right stuff? I think I know one potion from another. <laughs> but Hecuba has more vials in her collection than Fluffy has fangs. Trust me. This is the potion that Hecuba and I developed to wreak havoc on any couple that is stupid enough to think they were destined for a lifetime of happiness. <laughs> it works every time, Timmy. It twists people's minds, not to mention their futures. <laughs> Take a deep sniff. It has a very distinctive scent. And once this mist makes it up to the festivities on the Grain Estate, every happy couple you can think of will be torn asunder. No, but I'm not looking for him. I'm trying to find Miguel. I want to make sure we're the first to make it to the love square. Okay. Ethan's been playing in this maze since he was a kid. Even he said that whole thing about couples meeting in the square, being together forever is all just a big legend. Well, fine. You treat it as a legend. I'm going to be the one living happily ever after with my true love. Don't forget about the baby that you're planning to trick Miguel into fathering. They cry at night, you know. Mind your own business, Simone. Whatever you say. But don't be surprised when you find out that Chad and I beat you to the love square. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I have no idea where I am, much less where the center of this thing is. Me neither. But I hope you and Chad get there first. Oh, come on. I know that you and Ethan want to make it to the center first. Well, we don't need to win. We already know that we're going to be together forever. Oh, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be great if we both made it to the love square at the exact same time? <laughs> Whitney, is that you? <laughs> We're over here, Chad! <laughs> Whitney, uh, we need better directions than that. Oh, hey, it's Ethan. It sounds like our guys are together. <laughs> Man, you rich people got a weird way of entertaining yourself, boy. Hey, hey, I'm not rich anymore. And I told you, I mean, this was here before the cranes even settled on this property. I don't even know who built this. Oh, I do. Somebody with a very sick mind. <laughs> I feel so much better now that I know that Ethan's focus is on the person who actually sent the email to the tabloid. I mean, once he finds out who that person is, he won't be so mad at me when I tell him that I knew about his mother and Sam Bennett before he did. I'm finally out of the woods. Hmm. Maybe, Teresa, but you sure run out of the bushes. Enjoying yourself, dear? Not terribly. May I have a word with you, please? Oh, oh, yeah, uh, uh, just be a minute, okay? This isn't gonna take long, is it? Because Julian and I were, were in the middle of something. Am I missing something? No, I am. Where's the story exposing Teresa as Ethan's whistleblower? You promised me you'd make it look as though Teresa was the person who sent the damning email to the tabloid exposing his paternity. All in good time. I can't wait any longer. Teresa stole Ethan from me the night before we were supposed to be married. I think it's time Teresa knows how it feels to lose the man she loves. So what do you say, boss? Can I run with the story or not? Well, it is true our readers have an insatiable appetite for anything to do with the cranes, but I'm not sure that this story will sell newspapers. People already know that Ethan's been 86 from the family. A couple days ago, I would have agreed with you. In fact, that's what I told Ethan. But you know, I've been thinking about it, and my gut tells me the public will lap this up. Because the only thing juicier than a rags to riches story is its opposite. 
The downfall of somebody rich and famous. And believe me, inquiring minds want to know the name of the dirtbag who sold out the young heir to the family fortune. And I'm going to give it to him. You may be right. <sighs> Look, boss. I know that this is a hard story because Ethan himself would pay good money to find out the name of the person who did him dirty. Just pity the poor schmo who turned him in. Because when Ethan gets a hold of him, or her, it ain't going to be pretty. <laughs> Who cares as long as it sells papers for us? So I have your okay. Go for it. Get two champagnes, please. Uh, thank you, sir. There he is, the man of the hour himself. <laughs> Hank. I'm so glad you could make it, man. Oh, like I'd miss my best buddy's engagement party. Just help me understand one thing, though. Yeah. Since when did Sheridan's brother and father become such big fans of yours? Throw you a bash like this to welcome you to the family. Uh, no offense, amigo, but isn't something a little rotten here in Harmony? Yeah, you got that right. That's exactly what I want to know. Who Luis is talking to. Never seen that one before. But you will be seeing her again, sister dear. I was keeping Rebecca. Hello, father. Well, I'm waiting. Everything's going according to plan. It won't be long now before Sheridan discovers the man she intends to marry, M. Flagrante, with another. The night of her engagement party, no less. Should put a bit of a damper on your wedding plans, don't you think? <laughs> I most certainly do, Julian. <laughs> I most certainly do. <laughs> I think your brain's made of stuffing. <laughs> oh, I might do it's just a joke. The maze was created in order to concentrate an enormous amount of negative energy in one place. And it's absolutely crackerjack at destroying even the happiest couples. Now, if we're lucky, Charity and Miguel will wander in there. And I promise you, once they emerge, the odds of their ever making love are nil. And Tabitha and Jimmy would be saved from Charity's forces of good. You're paying attention, Timmy. Think of it this way. Lovers check into the maze, but they don't check out. <laughs> If I don't go inside the maze, maybe my premonition won't come true. Charity? Charity, where are you? I'm still outside, Miguel. <laughs> what are you waiting for? It's fun in here. So, how do you explain Big Brother and Big Daddy's sudden turnaround? 
for tonight I got the distinct impression that they'd rather die than let you marry Sheridan. Yeah, we'll get this. They claim it's because they discovered family values after they lost their precious Ethan. And you buy that? Not at all. What Sheridan does, I Hank, you should have seen her face once she heard her father say that he loved her. Ever since her mother died when she was a little girl, she's been desperate for his attention. That's why you've gone along with this whole charade. Well, it's the least I can do for the woman I love. Come on, baby. You told me that spoiled little debutante had nothing compared to me, remember? So prove it to me, big boy. Come to me. Forget little Miss Moneybags, because I've got everything you've ever needed. I thought that was a wrong number. Is it possible that Louise... No. I'm sure Louise can explain. I wish you could be here, Father. Sheridan's about to confront Louise about his other woman. It's all synchronized like a fine Swiss timepiece. With your track record, I'd hardly be so smug. You better hope this succeeds in permanently parting Sheridan from Louise. If not, it's back to plan A. It's not going to come to that. I'm not going to have to murder my own sister. you with me. He's mine. Leave him alone or you will be sorry. What's going on? Why am I having these horrible visions? Going. Look, Kay, you're on your own. I'm trying to make it to the love square first myself. Oh. Yeah. If Chad and I beat the rest of you, then maybe you guys will start taking our relationship a little bit more seriously. I mean, I don't know why you guys don't, but I'm going to fix that tonight. I think Whitney may have a little bit to say about that. What? What did you just say about Whitney? Simone, I'm only suggesting that you may have bigger problems with Chad than who beats who to the love square. I mean, I think Whitney may want him just as much as you do. No. We straighten that all out. She knows that Chad is my boyfriend. Whatever you need to tell yourself. Hey, you know, help me out here, man. What do you think is the best way to tell Simone that I like her just as a friend? Yeah, that's pretty tough. I mean, any way you say it, she's gonna be hurt. Yeah, I know, man. I hate that. I mean, she's a good kid, you know? Right. But you also know that Whitney's the one I'm crazy about. I mean, how do you think Simone's gonna take it if me and Whitney wind up in the love square first? Well, you know, Chad, that's one thing you don't have to worry about. Because Teresa and I are gonna get there before you even get close. Says you, chump. Oh, I think that we've been here before. Well, that's because everything looks the same. It'll be a miracle if any of us ever make it to the love square. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. So when are you gonna break the news to your sister about you and Chad? Oh, I don't know. Probably the same time you tell Ethan that you knew about his fraternity before it came out in the tabloid. You are not going to start in on me about that again, right? Yeah, yeah, I am, until you come clean. You know that it's the right thing to do. Stop worrying. Once Ethan finds out who sent the email to the paper, I will be in the clear. There's no way anything could ever come between us. You'll see. Mm. Come on. <sighs> It's so easy for you to be patient, Mother. You have Julian right where you want him. I have to watch Teresa climbing.
strict confidentiality laws in place. Email address or no, it won't be that easy to match it up with a name. Oh, I got my ways, boss. All I gotta do is make a couple phone calls to my contacts at the internet providers and it's done. It... oh, damn, they've all left for the day. Well, I'll have to wait till morning. Not necessarily. You may get lucky tonight. Oh, oh, oh. Well, what do you know? It's monkey suit time again. Sheridan Crane's engagement party, and this time everyone's invited. You shouldn't have half so much trouble getting past security. Still got my tux hanging in the office. Get moving. Get out your earplugs, boss. Because that explosion you hear will be the sound of Ethan losing it when he finds out who sold him out. Hmm. What's wrong? Tamika and Princess was happy. Oh, I would be if I could get out of here. But it's so frustrating to be stuck down here while the mist is making its magic above. Oh, if only that stone hadn't closed, cutting off our exit. Jimmy still can't believe there isn't another way out. Uh, you're wasting your time, dollface. I distinctly remember Hecuba's original design plans for this place. She wanted to be sure that her lair was completely inaccessible to any potential trespassers. <laughs> As if anyone would find their way down here hundreds of feet underground. Oh, I'd give anything to be up at that party tonight, watching the mist take effect. <sighs> I wonder who it's playing havoc with right now, at this very moment. I could have sworn Luis and that woman are right out here. Let me explain. I don't want to hear it. I'm tired of you ignoring me. I'm not. You don't even answer your own cell phone anymore. I, I thought that was our private number. That voice. It sounds just like the woman on Luis's phone. But he said he had no idea who she was or what the call was about. Why would he lie to me? You know, maybe we're being too cynical. Maybe Sheridan's brother and father have had a change of heart. <laughs> Not a chance. A little while ago, I caught them in the middle of a phone conversation. Julie and Alistair were congratulating each other about how I had no idea about what was going on. <sighs> Talk about being caught in the act. Right. So my hunch is they're just being nice to me so they can get on my good side, and I'll forget about investigating my father's disappearance. They obviously don't know you very well, do they? No. They don't know me very well at all. Because I am going to marry Sheridan, and I am going to find out what those bastards did to my old man. If I find out that Julian and Alistair did have something to do with my father's disappearance, I want to make him pay. In-laws or not. I believe you. Hey, listen. I'm gonna go mingle. Tell Sheridan I'm sorry for, you know, stealing away for so long. Yeah, well, I gotta find her first. Hey, have a good time tonight. Maybe there's a woman here for you. From your lips, ma'am. I'm sorry, Julian. Gwen really needed me. What did I miss? Only Sheridan catching sight of her lover outside with our hired floozy. She's going to investigate. Hmm. <sighs> Such a short engagement. I hope she enjoyed it while it lasted. This is coming from. It wasn't foggy before. Get away from me, Teresa. I never want to see you again. No, Ethan, no! Ethan and Teresa are madly in love. What would they possibly have to fight about? You're right, boss. 
Crane security is lax tonight. Nobody even checked my ID when I came through the gate. Good. You remembered to bring a copy of the original email, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't leave home without it. Now all I gotta do is check around, see if anybody recognizes the return address. With any luck, we'll know whose computer tipped us off about Ethan's paternity by the end of the night. And I can't wait to see the informer's face when I tell him they've been outed. I was kind of hoping that you were Chad. Well, to be honest, I was hoping that you were Ethan, too. Hey, Whitney, you okay? I'm fine, Chad. Me too, Chad. Do you have any idea where you are? Uh, not a clue. Oh. Wow, this mist is really weird, isn't it? Yeah, no kidding. It just but it came up so suddenly, it's giving me the creeps. Are you sure it's not Gwen and Rebecca Hotchkiss that are giving you the creeps? Don't start, Wit. Well, I can't help it, Teresa. I wouldn't be your best friend if I didn't give you a hard time. I mean, what if they did find out that you knew that Ethan was Sam Bennett's son and didn't tell him? Well, they couldn't have. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. If they had any idea, they would have gone running to Ethan out of spite. No, they're just, they're just bluffing, that's all. I may not have all the answers, but I do know one thing for sure. That Ethan and I are going to be together and happy for the rest of our lives. Where'd they go? <sighs> the lying tramp is probably lured Ethan to some romantic spot so she can try and seduce him again. Well, give it your best shot, Missy. Enjoy it now while you have it, because once he finds out that you're the one who sold him out to the tabloid, he's gonna send you packing. And no one is going to enjoy watching you being tossed out on your behind more than me, Miss Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald. You wouldn't be threatening my best friend's little sister, would you? What a cruel twist of fate. We set all the fun in motion upstairs and now we're going to miss the whole show. Oh, Timmy knows how his princess feels. Last week, Timmy missed Buffy. And he doesn't know when they'll show the rerun. On the other hand, if Miguel and Charity are ripped apart, maybe the forces of darkness will recognize my efforts and give me enough of my powers back so we can escape this bloody lair. Maybe Timmy and Gabby won't have to wait that long. What are you on about? Where the chickens did you get those? Over there, in that box. Timmy is going to use this magic wand to get him and his princess back to the party. You most certainly are not. You don't know the first thing about magic. In the wrong hands, things can go terribly awry. You have no idea about the potency of that wand, Timmy. Do too. Timmy seen his princess and Hecuba cast thousands of spells. It's easy. Oh, well, thank you, Minnie Merlin. You've just dismissed my entire professional career. Timmy didn't mean to put down his princess. He just... Wants to get out of this place. And Tabby did say she wants to go back to the party. You know, I just realized that I haven't seen Tabitha and her little sidekick since they first arrived. <sighs> Julian, her sidekick is a doll. And you've got to stop carrying on about her. She is just a harmless village eccentric. Well, yeah, you're a smart woman, Rebecca, but in this case, you're wrong. you, Timmy. Get them out of here before they run out of there. 
Oh, pff, that makes absolutely no sense at all. The cadence is completely off. It won't accomplish a thing. Degenerates done to me. They're just calm down. No need to get yourself in a lather. Well, the hell there isn't. Will you get rid of him to me? But Jimmy's not sure he knows how. Now I have proof he's alive. You're coming with me, young fellow. Oh no! Jimmy, you take back his soul! Come, you little sprat! scaring me. Look, you've got to stop this unhealthy obsession with Tabitha Lennox and her doll. I mean, besides, it is a huge waste of time and energy, especially now. How can you say that to me after what just happened? What are you talking about? They kidnapped what? me. Just returned from an involuntary round trip to some sort of lair beneath the earth. But lair? Kidnapping? What? Oh, don't tell me. This is about Tabitha. That's who was behind it. She and her damn Timmy doll, but I believe he is the one who sent for me. He had on this most ridiculous looking wizard cap. Oh, you poor dear. You are on overload, aren't you? I'm going to cut you off right now. It has nothing to do with drinking or being tired or anything else. It's the God's honest truth. I'm trying to tell you those two are dangerous. Of course they are. Look, why don't I take you to the library so you can just sit down and rest a minute, all right? I'll take care of the whole Louise and share the thing on my own. Come on. <clears throat> oh, damn it, we're too late. Just, just try it and act normal, okay? Here comes the real Louise. <clears throat> I'm looking for Cheryl. Have either of you seen her? Oh, I'm afraid we can't help you. Ah, <laughs> uh, maybe she went upstairs to powder her nose. Maybe. <laughs> Not one word, Rebecca. Not one word. Oh. Oh. Louise! Congratulations. Hey, sure. <laughs> wow. You look great in that purple dress. Thank you. So where's the big guy tonight? Oh, Harry's on duty at the station, so I'm here for the both of us. Where's your beautiful bride to be? That's a good question. I'm actually looking for her right now. <laughs> She's a lucky woman. And, Luis, I've got to tell you, I've never seen you look happier. Well, there's a reason for that. I found a love in my life. For some strange reason, she loves me, too. Luis! What's going on? I need to talk to you! Maybe he and that woman went back inside. I've got to find out why he lied to me. I warned you to put that wand down before you did any damage. Jimmy didn't do any damage. Jimmy made magic. If Jimmy was able to beam Julian down here, then he should definitely be able to beam him and his princess back up to the party. This isn't an episode of Star Trek, you know. You're out of your league. And you're lucky that your antics didn't get us into any more trouble than they did. Now, put that wand down this instant. I'm the one who's going to get us out of here. Hold on a second, Tabby. Let Jimmy try one more thing. Agatha's lair is as nice as a house. But Tabby needs to get out of here as quick as a mouse. No, what you've done to me. I'll never be able to view the chaos upstairs.
Cherry, <laughs> thank God. I was afraid I'd never find you. I know. I feel like Alice when she fell down the rabbit hole, and the mist is making it really hard to see. I was worried about you. Oh, um, I'm okay. I just wish the game was over. I'm, I'm really not having fun. Me neither without you. Did something happen to upset you? I've just been having these premonitions again. Well, you told me about the one where you saw Chief Bennett and Ivy Crane kissing, and then Mrs. Bennett saw them, but I know. that's not possible. These are different. And it's not that I really believe that they're going to happen. I mean, I had one vision of, of Whitney and Simone, and they were fighting over Chad. And then I saw Ethan, and he was furious with your sister. I wonder where that could have come from. I don't know. And that's not even the most disturbing one of all of them. What else did you say? You know what? I feel stupid even talking about it, so... Come on. I want to hear it. Okay. I had a premonition of you and you were with... You've been having premonitions again, Charity? What about? Charity was just about to tell me. Tell us what you saw. destined to be together for the rest of our lives. What'd you say? No, 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 I don't think so. Uh, you're looking at the uh, champion super you. couple right thank here. We're the ones who won. Um, <laughs> actually, you're wrong. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, well, I hate to burst your bubble, but it doesn't matter who got here first. This isn't the love square. What? Oh, what are you talking about? Oh. Man? Oh. Well, well, where is it? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a clue how to get there from here. But I know you'll know what it looks like when you find it because there's like a distinctive looking bench right smack in the middle of the love square. Ah, oh, which Ethan and I will be sitting on when you two slow folks get there. <laughs> hey, you gonna let her get away with that? No, 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 that's okay, that's okay, because I'm not really worried about them because I know I'll make it there first, honey. Oh, that's right. Well, you know what? I don't care who wins because everything is so perfect right now. I've got the best feeling that the four of us are always going to be as happy as we are this very minute. I know you were hurt when Ethan decided to marry Teresa instead of you. Hurt isn't the word. I've been there before. I had pretty high hopes for Sheridan and me before my best friend decided to move in on me. Yeah, it's a completely different situation. I'm just saying, I've got a pretty good idea how you must feel. That's why I can give you a bit of friendly advice. Oh, thanks, but we're hardly friends. Do yourself a favor and listen up anyhow. I've known Luis all my life. He's very protective of his little sister. And what does that have to do with me? Plenty. Don't get any ideas about giving Teresa a hard time. You don't want Luis on your bad side. <laughs> Besides, what's the point? You're a beautiful woman. You can have any guy you want. Forget Ethan. Move on with your life. <sighs> the nerve of him threatening me? As if I should be afraid of Teresa's brother? He should be afraid of me. Hey, where are you going? Hey, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute. I Do I? I know you? I don't think so. Oh, no, you're, you're the tabloid reporter who broke the story about Ethan and Sam Bennett. Well, you got it. Uh, look, I'm sure you're not my biggest fan, but uh, do me a favor and uh, don't rat me out to anybody tonight, okay? Oh, no, no, on the contrary. I am very happy that you're here. Take the mask off. <clears throat> 
someone sees you and the real Luis in the same room, it'll ruin everything. <laughs> yes, it's good. Can't afford to blow it when we're doing so well thus far. Well, then you're pleased with my acting job, Mr. Crane? Oh, extremely, my dear. I'm sure my sister thought that she was witnessing a lover's spat between Luis and some girlfriend he neglected to tell her about. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope so. Uh, we'll know for sure when Sheridan catches up with Luis. Come, my dear, let's go find a good spot from which to view the fireworks. <laughs> <clears throat> Sheridan, there you are. I've been looking all over for Luis, you. Luis, why are you lying to me? I saw you talking to that woman. 